are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 556, Morning Has Broken. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives, and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Malachi, the fourth chapter. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O oh Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all it fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to the earth to judge. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. Our second reading is from 2 Thessalonians, the third chapter. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when, you were, when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day, so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have the right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when you were, we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. The Gospel of Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. This is about the destruction of the temple. <clears throat> when some people were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, as for these things you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, Rabbi, Lord Jesus, when will this be? 
And what will be the sign that is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places, famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. And Jesus says, For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your souls. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I begin this message with gratitude. I have been a lay preacher now for about three years, and I have been more like a circuit preacher of old. I have been to at least 12 different churches in the geographic area at one time or another. And now I'm currently in the SAM that's called the Synodically Authorized Ministry which is in place because of our shortages of ministers right now. So we are being called to kind of be an intermediary there in that place and time. So the SAM program brings me together with cohort lay preachers, and I understand you had a couple here, and Susan Harris and and Mark Hall. I have been following them around. <laughs> so, we are under in an intense program and we have mentors, we have what, relators, seminary professors, and pastoral supervisors. And I'm thankful for the opportunities like this here to worship with you and I appreciate your prayers and the monetary support for this program. You are an integral part of my journey along with my cohort. So, in our reading today, we are told of the temple that is just majestic at its prime. Some of you may have been there to see the remnants of that I have, and I could only imagine what the building in its prime was really like. But we understand that even with the buildings of today, they can be laid waste. Just observe some of the destruction in the Ukraine, or what Hurricane Ian did to buildings and infrastructure, infrastructure in the Caribbean, Florida and South Carolina, utter destruction. Jesus is the way, the truth, 
and the light. He is the solid ground on which we stand, and without his presence in our lives, we are but empty vessels. As one Christian song states, we desire to be a living sanctuary that is being molded by God through the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. And Jesus assures us here that he will never leave us or forsake us. And we go about missions in the world. He promises to give us the words and wisdom to navigate the terrain we are currently tra traversing, to be confident in the Holy Spirit's leading and guiding us, to be the Christians we are called to be. Christians that stand for truth and justice. And then it says to have endurance. Endurance in tragedy, unbelief, troubles we face, the whole gambit. We come to the foot of the cross and lay everything before the Lord who died, was raised, and who will return again. In 2 Thessalonians that we just read, as a reminder, it says in verse 13, Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. And how do we know when we are doing right? When we pray without ceasing and walk as the baptized Christians we are, we walk wet, we walk faithfully, and serve the living Lord. Wake, awake, as we will sing shortly. So in the 1950s, taking you folks a few years back, and myself included, there was a traditional African-American spiritual that emerged as a song of comfort, expressing God's providence. And I bet everyone knows it. It's called, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. He got the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got you and me brother in his hands. He's got you and me sister in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. In today's gospel, Jesus warns about wars and earthquakes, famines and plagues, dreadful portents, and great signs from heaven. And then he encourages his hearers. Don't worry about it. I have your back in the world. It will all turn out well. I will even make it an opportunity for you to testify. So Hebrew Christians in Jerusalem faced persecution and hardship almost from the very beginning. And Paul, the Apostle Paul, was concerned for them and asked, his Gentile Christian converts to give to help the members of their Christian family in Jerusalem. He laid out his idea for the church, not class warfare, but deep-seated mutual concern and burden sharing. And they responded gladly, and he urged them to finish the collection in the same generous spirit Jesus had shown them. So, oh, with hearts and minds of gratitude, the practice of gratitude is holy. Gratitude for God's grace and mercy, but also for those who served in the military to give us the freedoms we have. Gratitude for public safety personnel, teachers, the medical profession, and others. Let's be honest with each other. In our everyday world, as it is now, most of us are not being persecuted for our Christian faith. But if you have been, like myself, if I venture out there on social media of today, you and I may have picked carefully what you sent out, whether it was your own thoughts, opinions, or the thoughts and opinions 
opinions you forwarded on. You and I may have been taken aback from some of the comments directed at us from those who did not agree with us. Depending on the topic, we may have felt wrongly persecuted. It did not literally kill us, but it certainly could have negative effects on our mental and spiritual well-being if we're not careful and in prayer. So my question for you, has Jesus' love for you and me penetrated deep into our soul where it is so ingrained in our being that our identity springs from it? That you walk in that, in the moment. That would be Jesus' hope and desire for you and for me. Perhaps, even as you're hearing this, you might hear him whispering, I see you, I got you, and with everything I have, I love you. So I took this out of um, one of my readings, and it says this, the world is going to tell you Follow your heart. Jesus is going to say, follow me. The world is going to say, believe in yourself. Jesus is going to say, believe in me. The world is going to say, discover yourself. Jesus is going to say, deny yourself. The world is going to say, be true to you. Jesus is going to say, be true to me. So we boldly claim Jesus died, Jesus rose, and Jesus will come again. Oh Lord, hasten that day. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Our hymn of the day is number 452, Awake, O Sleeper, Rise from Death.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We offer our prayers of intercession. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. We believe in God. Keep your church active in its ministry and mission. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Renewing God, as the northern hemisphere prepares for winter, Make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick. We especially pray for Beverly and Glenn Barger, Ruby and Cliff Hefner, Ann and John Henson, Wayne Fairchild, Audrey Haas, Austin Haas, Stella Hampton, Millie Heffinger, Floyd Kazea, Judy Lale, Florence Lohman, Peggy Poe, Rachel Price, Sarah and Danny Wallace, Gail and Hoover Wilcox, and those whom we name silently, Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Uniting God. Unite this assembly in its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel, especially our work with South Caldwell Christian Ministries, Veterans Helping Veterans, Teachers Closet Network, and the Blessing Boxes. Highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreement. Lord, in your mercy, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. Console in God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones who have died, especially the family of Millie Heffinger, the family of Ellis Hope, and others, Lord, that we are aware of. We ask this in Jesus' name. Comfort us with the promise of resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God and those known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace using American Sign Language, which I'm pleased to hear about. <laughs> yeah. Peace. Yeah. Peace. 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 Peace to you. Thank you.
minutes. stand as you are able. Blessed are you, maker of all things, as you have entrusted us with all that you have created. Now gather our gifts and send us to those who hunger and thirst for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now we pray the prayer of the Lord, the Lord taught us. Our Father, Amen. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, and who breathes on us the spirit of hope. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Our singing hymn this morning is number 818. Oh, Master, let me walk with you.
which is to grow in faith by seeking the will of God and sharing his love with all people. We go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks. 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 Thanks.